We're going to move on to our next topic, something that I love talking about. And that is the breaking news of the fact that Will Muschamp got fired, finally, and South Carolina still sucks. So let's go ahead and talk about that. All right, so Will Muschamp got fired, fifth year at the school, uh, <laughs> 28 and 30 overall at South Carolina. Now, it's the strange thing about South Carolina is, or Will Muschamp, let's not talk about South Carolina. The strange thing about Will Muschamp is that he actually has a winning record as a head coach. But you don't see that because you just see all the crap that he's been through, right? But a lot of those losses, 14, I think, out of the last 20 games, he's lost. And, you know, he had a lot of people at South Carolina happy, a 9-4 and four season, the second year, going on to beat Michigan, who was also equally overrated. Um, how about that? Both coaches are probably going to be in the unemployment line this year. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, again, you really don't see much uh, of the success that he's had. Now, talk a little bit about Will Muschamp. Of course, he was the walk-on guy at Georgia, played safety, ended up making the team, being a captain, rah, 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 nice story, right? And he goes on and gets his job. He's at Auburn as a coordinator. He's at LSU, wins a national championship at LSU under Nick Saban, goes to Miami with Nick Saban, and they just kind of bolted, goes back to Auburn, uh, he's got a stint at Texas. No, he goes to Texas after that, I think. Yeah, and then after Texas, remember, he was supposed to be the head coach in waiting uh, behind Mac Brown, and it didn't work out. They just kind of shipped him on somewhere else and got rid of Mac Brown. And then he was supposed to, and a lot of people don't know this. If you're a Clemson fan, I know we rag on Will Muschamp a lot. Will Muschamp was like number two in Clemson's coaching search in 2008. That's we scary wanted to think him. about. Yeah, that's scary to think about. That is really scary because... We would be where we would no, oh my gosh, I don't even want to talk about it. But Will Muschamp found his feet, finally got the job at Florida, took over for Urban Meyer. Wasn't half bad. Wasn't half bad. Wasn't good either, though. Yeah. And there's some reasons why he got fired there, of course. Uh, I think he had a string of games. I think he lost to Missouri, and Missouri couldn't throw the ball at all. He lost to South Carolina, ironically. And I think that was the last game of him getting fired there. Uh, I think it was 2014. November 14th i think he got fired like a couple of days ago six years ago which is funny anyway he finds himself back at auburn one year as a defensive coordinator again and then he gets this job at south carolina he was not south carolina's first choice he wasn't even a third choice remember they wanted lincoln riley they wanted uh rich rod who turned him down which is weird they i know they wanted tom herman he didn't get either of those guys you ended up settling for mr william muschamp now south carolina fans <laughs> were super excited, and some of them were super bummed out because they thought that they were going to get a big-time head coach like Urban Meyer, like they think now. And, you know, a lot of that was predicated off of, hey, we had a couple of good years under Steve Spurrier. It took him 11 years uh, to make them even relevant. But you got to remember that South Carolina has really never been good in their history. Uh, and I'm not just sitting up here ragging them on a, as a Clemson fan, but they really have not been good. A lot of that has to do with they just haven't had good coaching. The culture has never been changed, yet they laugh at a lot of things that Clemson do. I remember when Dabo was hired, South Carolina fans laughed at that. They say up until like 2013, remember, oh, he's a joke. He's a cheerleader. He's a terrible coach. We beat them every year. Now I bet you they wish they had a guy like Dabo Sweeney. And there's a couple of guys like that, and we're going to talk about that tonight. So I don't know what's going to happen. Of course, a lot of players are taking it at heart. J.C. Horn and Israel McQuamu, their top, I mean, top cornerbacks, both opted out. After giving up 159 points in the last three games, I think it's like, what is it, 257 points given this year, uh, 159 points in the last three games, and 708 yards to Ole Miss, Matt Corral. So I think it was time to go, especially when you have – Will Muschamp supposed to be the defensive guru, right? I don't know that they keep Missouri this week if they play the game under 42 points. No, and it's just embarrassing for the unit. Once again, like you'd say I'm being a homer as a Clemson. This is embarrassing that South Carolina's defense is that bad under a identity of a defensive head coach and a defense. You hired him to bring him in so your defense keep you in games. And like these last couple of weeks, it's just been an absolute embarrassment to the program. And now you got to pay him almost $15 million to ship him out of there. It's, it's, yeah. it's funny. It, well, 
And, you know, a lot of that, too, is I think it starts up top. Now, yeah, President it does. Kaslin it does. You know, comes over from uh, the uh, Army, uh, and he's a really hard-nosed, to-the-facts guy. I think if Harris Bastides was still there, they would probably still have uh, William Muschamp as the head coach. But I think a lot of this actually comes down on Ray Tanner. Now, Ray Tanner has made some terrible decisions. Um, I don't know that he is the AD for them to continue. I think head coach, yes, is important, but I think for you to, con I think for South Carolina to ever get good, they need a AD that has a vision of how things are going to go. So I talk about a guy like Terry Don who had a vision for Dabo. When he was gone, they brought in Dan Radakovich. Dan Radakovich was like, hey, Dabo, I'm, I'm on board with what you want. Let's do this. Let's make this happen, right? You see where we are, right? I feel like at South Carolina, they're not going to get a whole lot of support from their AD. And I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know who, what coach it could be. But like you mentioned, they're going to be paying a buyout for Will Muschamp to be hanging out at his house for the next few months, right? I mean – but Must then you chance, want to you want to hire another coach. Must chance mindset's got to be you know it's like Portland Trailblazers and then one two three Cancun. He's getting he's getting, <laughs> Let's go to it. He's getting thirteen million in the bank. Like yeah, he's, he's sitting back, he's sipping a pina colada. He's yeah, like, hey, he's man, having fun. Look, I pulled off a heist. Think about the not having the stress of being the South Carolina head coach. Yeah, like he gets you know, stress free fifteen I, again, million dollars. Uh, it's the same for Steve Spurrier. Think about the stress of not being South Carolina's head coach, and. I don't want to rag him too much, but when's the la who was the last successful coach outside of Steve Spurrier in the last 20 years? Uh, you can go back. Even then, if you go back further, they're probably still more unsuccessful. But you got to think, even at Clemson, Jeff Scott, his dad, Brad Scott, was a head coach down there. They didn't win at all. Lou Holtz, everybody talks about Lou Holtz. They didn't. I don't think they won more than nine games with Lou Holtz in his career. Now, who, Lou Holtz came from Notre Dame, where he was a legend. Not so much at South Carolina. Um, I can't think of any other coaches that were super, super successful. Just a historically mediocre program. I mean, I, I saw a comment on the show earlier. I think it was from Patrick that said that they have seven nine-win seasons in the history of their program. That's hilarious. Clemson's. <laughs> wow. Clemson has a chance to go to more playoffs than they had nine win seasons. Yeah. So, you know, I think Coach Morrison might have been – I think he might have gotten them to like nine or ten wins before. I remember Joe Morrison. I think he was the guy that brought in the, the sandstorm or the – or actually, no, the – I, I did that off key because that's kind of what their school is like right now. But I feel like if you're South Carolina, you have to be realistic. You have to be realistic, first and foremost. You're paying a 13 plus million dollar buyout to Will Muschamp to, to no longer have him be your head coach. Oh Lord. You're still paying staff that's on the that's on staff right now, which I, I would if I'm the new co head coach, I'm cleaning house. You also have to remember that you're gonna be paying some other guy's contract if he's already a head coach somewhere. So you're paying his buyout. On top of that, what are you doing with all the guys that you've recruited? We're going to talk about Gunnar Stockton, too, five-star quarterback from Georgia. How do you keep him now? Uh, but let's get into it. Let's, let's talk about something that needs to happen. So on the short list of head coaches for South Carolina, the first name that pops up, everybody's super excited about this, is Liberty head coach, former Ole Miss head coach, Hugh Freeze. Now, Hugh Freeze, remember, he, it took him a while to get a job somewhere because they had to the show clause him everywhere that he went. And Liberty finally settled on him because all that stuff that went down at Ole Miss. And I'm not judging the man's character. Say what you want about him. He's a winning head coach. He can win. Uh, right now, I think Liberty is ridiculously good. They're undefeated. They're putting up points on everybody. They've beaten two ACC teams. About to go for three this weekend. I just don't know that you can afford his new contract buyout from Liberty plus paying Will Muschamp and then allowing him to build a staff, a winning staff, not just coming in like Will Muschamp did and hiring Kurt Roper, who, a guy you knew was never going to make your offense be any good. He didn't make the offense any good at Florida with Will Muschamp. You have to go, you have to shoot a little lower. So I'm going to go ahead and say Will Musch, uh, Hugh Freeze, no. I wouldn't be surprised if they come up with the funds. At the same time, I don't know. Darla Moore was about to back out because she didn't get the president's job. 
Uh, and she, you know, she owns the uh, school of business down there. It's huge. So I don't know if I don't know that they can afford it. What do you think that they could find a way? Listen, I think that <laughs> I'm going to post something alter. I think Hugh Freeze can get a lot better of a job in the South Carolina job. <laughs> I really do. I think he. I think even if they can't come up with the funds for him. I think that this offseason, he will get a better job offer, a more attractive job offer than South Carolina. Well, because there's going to be a few of them open. We're yeah. talking about that, too. But um, So even, I if, let's know say, that even if the boosters come up with Yeah, I'm going to say no on millions, you freeze. I don't, think, I don't think he would take the job. No. I got, there's another guy that they've been talking about. Of course, he's a former Clemson assistant, former Alabama assistant, and that's Mr. Billy Napier, former Furman quarterback. Now, Billy Napier, in my mind, I joke about this all the time, would probably love to get this job so he can get back at Dabo for firing him in 2010. But he's made a name for himself all over college football. He's been uh, an analyst at Alabama. He's been quality control. He's been offensive coordinator at Arizona State, which got him this job at Louisiana Lafayette, where he's been blowing everybody out except Coastal, which we'll talk about in a second, too. Uh, Billy Napier actually might be one of the best candidates to get this job. Do I think he takes it? Maybe, because it is a vast up, upgrade money-wise from, from uh, Louisiana Lafayette. He can go to South Carolina. Spot. It is, because we'll talk about that too. But I think he might be the best case scenario right now just because I feel like he could build a staff because he has familiar. He's been in the SEC. He's, pl- he's coached in the SEC, not as a head coach, but he's been, uh, you know, he's very familiar with it. He's got a lineage that can help him. He's coached under a lot of different really good coaches. Dabo Sweeney, Nick Saban, Tommy Bowden. Good coach. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I, was, I had to stop myself from saying great coach there. Uh, but, you know, there's a, there's a lot of experience for Billy Napier, and I think that he might work out. Will he take it? I don't know. So then if he doesn't take the job, the next person in line, in my opinion, yeah. the guy who I think they need to sell out for yeah. is Jamie Chadwell at Coastal Carolina. I think this is who's going to get the job. That is the home run. He, yeah. Right now he is on a audition because he is blowing out teams with Coastal Carolina. Now, you know, he's served under Joe Moglia, who is the guru, the rich guy who never played football. He was a coach down at Coastal Carolina, but he ended up, you know, for assembling a really good staff. And, you know, I feel like Jamie Chadwell is that guy that, is young, he's smart. Innovative hire. Innovative hire. That's what you need. Like that's what South Carolina needs so desperately is they need change in their program. They have a, they currently have a losing culture. They have a losing coach and a losing staff. And obviously you get Mushroom out of there. You need someone that's going to come in. He's going to get his guys. He's going to bring in a good staff and he's going to change the program. They need to be fun. They're that's not right. fun. They're not fun at all. And they, well, if you look at the videos where <laughs> I'm not going to mention the video where Will Muschamp comes out there with some expletives, but they try to be fun. They're not. Yeah, but, Shai Smith is the only fun person on that team. And I don't want to go after Billy Napier because Billy Napier is known as one of the best recruiters in college football, period. But so was Will Muschamp, and look what that got you. It's about development of players, and they're not developing players outside because of specific you issues. Yeah, You need the staff. They're developing linemen, D-line, and cornerbacks. That's it. Nobody else at South Carolina has been developed. No quarterbacks. Who's the last quarterback. good quarterback at South Carolina? Gar- Do you want to call Garcia good? No. Connor Shaw was the next best quarterback that they've had, but I think that was more of a grit over talent thing. We've got some nightmare fuel in the comments what from uh, Wade Brigham. He says, "What about Will Venables to South Carolina?" Uh, <laughs> I think I think he, I think he meant Brent or Brent uh, Elliott. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, how about Sean Elliott? Another guy that's on their list, cor- current head coach at Georgia State, a guy that they let go in 2015. After Will, uh, after Steve Spurrier just let him go, I don't know that that's a guy you that's hire. Now, I think I if you think hire so. him in 2015, he might have a better traction. He had a hold over the locker room. The guys really liked him. But now that ship has sailed. There is no way that you get jo- uh, Sean Elliott to come back there. Uh, some other guys that we can talk about that, that are on my short list, and I'll talk with them about you. And folks, get you in the comment section. I want to hear your opinion too. But there's some guys I think they could hire. They're long shots, but they're not going to do it. First person is I've heard – and we talked about this last year over in the podcast, if you listen to 4th and 16, and we've heard a lot of people say this on air when they played Clemson, it was this way. Charlotte head coach Will Healy is about 34 years old. He's getting a lot of comparisons to Dabo Swinney, and they're, they're saying he's a really nice guy. He's really energetic. He had that one year at Austin P where he was just blowing everybody's brains out. He even played Georgia tight up until, like, the third quarter. But 
I don't know that Will Healy has enough experience on the big time. You can't bring a coach like that into the SEC. Also, like, I don't know you that gotta, works. You got to think what, from a program standpoint at South Carolina, you have to make a good hire. The boosters are already having to pay – you've got to pay him $13 million. They're going to make the safest hire possible. You can't bring it – what if you bring in this 34-year-old and he flops? Well, the, he you probably won't be paying him a lot. He's only making $755,000 right now at Charlotte. So I'm sure you could probably entice him with 900000 to a million and say goodbye about it. You know? Do you think that Mike Bobo has a chance to keep the job? We'll talk about this in a second. I want to get through these, and yeah. I want to talk about my nightmare scenario. But – uh, of course, another coach out there that I've actually seen tossed around in some uh, message boards, Dave Clawson from Wake Forest. That I, actually could happen. I like that one. That it's never going to happen. I think it could happen. I, I don't think it would happen. I think they could lure him away. I don't think they would. I think the, the so perception it, of Wake Forest is not good enough. I do agree with that. I think that he w he's actually a good coach yep. and that – he would take the job if offered, but I don't think South Carolina, he probably isn't on their radar. That no, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it works. And it's, it now, sucks for him because he actually deserves that job. Well, and then if you think about the South Carolina offense, this guy would absolutely, absolutely, he would revitalize it. He, it would be like would a reincarnation. Completely. Yeah. This team would be so good offensively. Uh, we saw them this past week. Granted, they North have Carolina's a five-star QB coming in. They, they, got, have, and they have talented wide you receivers. Need it. But you wouldn't know that because they only threw it to Shai Smith. I think the discrepancy, I think he's got 53 uh, receptions. The next closest is 16. That's an issue. Shai is really good. <laughs> um, he is really, he's a monster. You see uh, that one-hand grab he had against uh, Ole Miss last yeah, week? Yeah, but that's not good enough. <laughs> we'll talk about this more. So another guy that's coming up that I actually personally like, I think this guy is, he's underrated. A lot of people don't really know a whole lot about him, but he was able to, take a Jacksonville State team, make them really good, put make them relevant in the first year of uh, FCS football. Then he turned around and went D1 to another school. Then they that school just killed football, came back, brought him back again, and that's Bill Clark at University of Alabama, Birmingham, the, the UAB Blazers. Uh, now, he's a defense coordinator, and I think that South Carolina is probably going to shy away from a defensive coordinator just because of what they just had with Will Muschamp. But – this guy is actually really good at coaching. He knows what to do. He's good with players. Uh, he's really good with recruiting. Uh, I feel I feel like Alabama could use him if Pete Golding ever left for another job as a defensive coordinator. But that's another team. That's another coach that I honestly don't think South Carolina would give their time of day to because they're still thinking Urban Meyer, right? But another head coach could come in, Brian Harson, Boise State. Uh, this guy – knows what he's doing he's he is a monster when it comes to uh scheming and being a pretty good head coach i mean he took over for chris peterson at boys state and there is no drop off whatsoever uh again another coach i feel like south carolina is going to look for guys well yeah he's been in the sec before he knows sec football because it just means more clearly not <laughs> you've had a couple of guys who are not very good in we're the having, sec we're having some calls for jim harbaugh to carolina in the jim harbaugh is going to go to the jets you think that jim harbaugh, jim harbaugh is going to be the ne next head coach of the jets you think he's going to get that job after being absolutely so they hired adam gase what makes you think they wouldn't hire a guy like jim harbaugh plus jim harbaugh has some success in the nfl not in the college rig so much a lot of people want to give him credit for stanford he didn't build that that team so i don't it, it's he's a NFL guy, just like Nick Saban's a college guy, not a pro guy. We'll see what happens. But we also got a couple more good comments. Uh, talk about Clark Lee from Notre Clark Dame. Lee. Now I feel like Clark Lee, again, another defensive coordinator. I don't see them going. So with you think that? And I, I'm personally in agreement with you. And this is what they need to do. I think they need to go after a more offense oriented. But coach. don't go so deep offensively that you lose your head. A AKA Mississippi State. I like Mike Leach. It's not working down there. He's not a fit. Neither was Joe Moorhead. But Joe Moorhead. Could be a fit. Now he's the offensive coordinator at Oregon right now. I feel like he's a guy that got that's got. You know what, I, you know you know what know? I really don't understand when touching on Leach. I don't but understand why he doesn't take an OC job at a premier program because he doesn't want to be the second in command. I feel like he could take a, <laughs> if he took an OC job, it would be. So he much hasn't better. been the second the, in command since he was at Iowa Wesleyan under Hal Mummy. The problem, <laughs> that's with, been before the problem you with him is they never get any recruits wherever he goes. No, they don't, and and, and it's hard to again. When you he doesn't have exactly go to offense. places that are easy to recruit either. Well, yeah, and then you also have to have a place the expectations aren't to win the conference. You're never going to win the conference when you're Mississippi State. You're not beating Alabama. And if you get through Alabama, you're not beating Texas A&M. You're not beating LSU. You're not beating Auburn. It's just too hard. So I feel like they got a guy that can make them competitive, not championship level. 
Sounds a lot like a team on the SEC East, right? South Carolina. Um, just a few others. I've heard Steve Sarkeesian from Alabama as the offensive coordinator. He's got head coaching position, but I feel like if you give him too much power, he'll do what he did at Washington and get in trouble, and he'll be out again. Not a good hire for me. Ultimately, they want a guy like Urban Meyer. They want a guy like Bob Stoops. Can you pull him away from the XFL or the Dallas Renegades or whatever? Keep dreaming about Urban Keep Meyer. Keep dreaming about Urban Meyer. He's going to Texas when Tom Herman's fired because they could hire Tom Herman at South Carolina now. You could say, hey, but guess what Tom Herman wants? Money. Mm. You don't have that. So what this sounds like after all those coaches I just named, if you don't go for Br Billy Napier or Jamie Chadwell, the only logical explanation is keeping Mike, Mike Bobo. Bobo. Now, a lot of people are going to hate that, but Mike Bobo, because they talked about, oh, he was a Mountain West Conference that coach who got fired just 11 months ago. I saw that comment somewhere. You know, he brought in Colin Hill, a guy from, you know, Colorado State who's from South Carolina. It, it is what it is. He's only thrown six touchdown passes this year, which is weird, even though they've scored like 40 points a couple of times. That would be terrible. You need to keep Mike Bobo. No. And you have to because Mike Bobo is going to keep Connor Shaw. Now, Connor Shaw has been moved into a quarterback coach position. You could possibly move him to offensive coordinator if he has a co-coordinator position designation. So you think that's the a only good reason move for Carolina is to keep Mike Bobo? That's you what you want to know why you want to keep Mike Bobo. I don't agree with this. You lose Gunnar Stockton if you have nobody on that staff that recruited him. Now, Connor Shaw and his father, Connor Shaw's dad is the head coach in Georgia over Connor, Gunnar Stockton. That's the connection with him and Mike Bobo. Well, then it's more you lose both you, of those guys. It's more no important you Stockton. keep Connor then. You're not going to keep Connor as the offensive coordinator though. If a new you head don't coach think comes he's in, qualified for that no, job? you know who would, you know, no. Just because you're a gr you're a great guy there and they love you doesn't mean they're going to bring you back. I mean, Brian Kelly has Tommy Re Tommy Reese up at Notre Dame because he played under him. But if you get a new guy, let's say a Jamie Chadwell, he's not going to be like, you know, he's going to say, hey, I have my own staff. I want to go look, pick anybody else out there that I can have this do this job. And it's not going to be Connor Shaw. He has no experience being the OC. Quarterback coach is a different thing. He'd be a passing game coordinator. We talk about how that is. But if you want to keep this five-star, it's important. And I think it's important you keep him because now your depth is backwards. Luke Doty, everybody was like, oh, the high-flying quarterback from Myrtle Beach is now a wide receiver. DeKirian Jorner, who is getting no playing time whatsoever, should have went to Clemson because he was. they wanted him as a corner, wide receiver, and guess what you're playing now? He's getting no play. Ryan Helensky was supposed to be the savior. He is now a backup. He's thrown like seven passes this year. Then you have Gun, uh, Colin Hill, who is not very impressive at all. Your quarterback room is decimated now, so you need a five-star guy because what do elite teams have? The teams that the win national championships have. Quarterback. Everyone but Alabama, you have to have a great quarterback. But even then, their their quarterbacks are they're good. Uh, AKA Mac Jones. Nobody Mac. knows it because all the other positions are super good. Oh. Now Mac Jones is showing you, hey, I'm I'm better than all those Greg McElroys and AJ oh, McCarron. They, they they say they compared him to AJ McCarron, and that's not he's so that's much not fair. Better. He's much better than him. But also, have you seen the latest reports about how Jalen Waddle could back? be back for the college football for what, playoff? Though? They don't need him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they, they would bring him back for his own posterity. But if I'm him. I know that the NFL is coming and I'm going to be a first round guy. I'm checking you out. You would sit? I'm checking out. And I, it's not that I'm a bad teammate, but. So is why that. Why come back? Then? Are you sitting to not risk getting re injured? Is that why you're sitting? That is the number one reason because if you get injured with everything being pushed back, especially college football players. Oh, that's playoff, a nightmare for his draft stop. Now you're going to have to have no time off to get prepared for the combine. There's zero chance I'm playing if I'm only going to be able to come back by the playoffs. There's just no chance in doing that. But, um, you know. Again, I, Bobo is going to give you that familiarity with this year. Of course, a lot of these guys are going to be gone next year. They're going to check out and probably transfer and probably go to the NFL. There's only going to be about four guys that can go NFL from this team. But I think Mike Bobo is probably the safest bet. I think Jamie Chadwell is the best bet. And I think – that Billy Napier is going to still give you bang for your buck. So if South Carolina wants to get better, again, it's not about their coaching as much as it is their culture. And you have to bring in the right coach, the right AD. I still think Tanner needs to go because uh, they've got talent in, in places there. But And, and they've, got, they've got recruiting. Uh, they've got facilities. They've got all these things. But the one thing you're going to have to do is pay this guy well because he's going to have to go up against Florida, Georgia, and then Texas A&M and any, uh, Auburn every single year. Uh, that's and then Clemson. Let's not even talk about Clemson. So you got built in at least two losses every single year. It's tough to win at South Carolina, and we'll see what happens going forward from there.